the praise the Lord. I hope you guys are blessed this afternoon. Um, we are going to continue our reading today in uh, Matthew 23. Um, I referenced back on YouTube, and I know I read Matthew 22 and uh, made a video about it, but for some reason, it's not on YouTube, so I have to go back through my uh, library, my uh, photos, and see what happened and where that is. So, um, we're going to Matthew 23 today, and um, I thank God for a wonderful weekend that I had. Fourth of July was just absolutely amazing. Fourth of July weekend, we had a lot of uh, just rest and relaxation out on the deck. A lot of sun. God blessed us with a beautiful weekend. There was no rain at all for our time off, our three-day weekend. I thank God for a three-day weekend. Um, that was just a beautiful weekend, a lot of swimming. Got to ride pontoon for a little bit. Saturday morning, um, just got got to enjoy God's green earth and, and the lake and, and uh, our pool and just uh, stayed home. Uh, a lot of times we don't get to do that. We are so busy. We got a lot of running around to do sometimes uh, we don't really get to stay home but thanks be to god this last three days over the holiday we got to just relax and do some fireworks and just spend time um at home so praise god i hope you all had a nice relaxing three-day holiday weekend all right let's pray before we get into this chapter father god we thank you for a wonderful weekend lord we thank you god that you are real and you are our our real Father God, Lord, and we thank you, God, that we can petition and, and ask, but not only ask and petition and, and ask of supplications from you, God, but that we can also thank you and love on you and have a relationship with God. We thank you, God, that you are near and dear to our hearts, God. We thank you that you are alive and you are alive and well, God. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We just ask that you would cause it to lead us, and guide us, and give us discernment and just just uh, dwell with us, God, and fill us up with your Holy Spirit to, from the top of our heads to the sole of our feet, God. Lord, we thank you for your word. Help it to come alive as I read it and help us to not only hear it, but to live by it and write it upon our hearts and our minds, God, that we may help others and teach and preach to others. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Jesus criticized the religious leaders. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to the disciples, the teachers and religious law and the Pharisees, are the official interpreters of the law of Moses. So practice and obey whatever they tell you. But don't follow their example, for they don't practice what they teach. They crush people in unbearable religious demands and never lift a finger to ease their burden. Everything they do is for show. All right, we see a lot of that in the churches today, guys. We see a lot of ministers and teachers and, and, and uh, people coming up on the pulpits of God and uh, a lot of what we are seeing today, guys, is, is entertainment, okay? I'm not trying to step on anybody toes, anybody's toes this morning, and I'm not, I'm not trying to offend anybody this morning, but there's a lot of, there's an entertaining spirit that is uh, involved in a lot of our churches today, and uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with, um, you know, praising God, and there's different ways to praise God, but Listen, guys, when, when there is more entertainment, okay, if there's more entertainment and more light shows, if there's more laser light shows and more smoke and fog and, and there's more uh, spotlights on the, on the people that are on the guitars and on the drums and on the music and the, the vocalist, if there's more of a spotlight put on them than there is um, on God and the message of God and the Word of God, then there is um, there's something wrong there, okay? We have to be very careful that we are not just putting on a show. Um, God's not interested in, in, in just a show. God's not interested in lip service. God's lip, interested in a, in, in a heart that is full of love towards Him. And, and we come to church to gather and to praise and to lift up His holy name. God wants the glory, guys. God wants to speak in church services. God wants to move in church services, but we got to move out of the way so God can move, okay? Some of us are, are going to church for the wrong reasons. We go into church because we like to, to look at the pretty lights and the fog and, and the music sounds good. And then when we get to the, the Word of God, we're, you know, half half listening and, 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 and ministers are putting on more of a show than they are trying to get into the Word of God and dig deep and be led by the Holy Spirit, okay? I'm going to move on, all right? 
On their arms they wear extra wide prayer boxes and scripture verses inside, and they wear robes with extra long tassels. And they love to sit at the head of the banquets and the seats of the honor in the synagogues. They love to receive respectful greetings as they walk in the marketplaces and to be called rabbi. All right, guys, listen. You know, there is nothing wrong with reverence for your pastor. There's nothing wrong with reverence for the the man of God, the man of the hour, okay? But when it becomes um, more of a show than anything else, if these pastors are walking in with $5,000 tuxedo suits with all the bells and whistles and they're driving all these fancy cars and, and they got a prideful heart and they're they're walking in the churches and the synagogues, you know, demanding and expecting that people are more praising to them and, and respectful to them than they are the Spirit of God and God Himself, then we need to be very careful because we are putting on a show, guys. We are becoming too prideful. Even some of these pastors out there are becoming too prideful because they've developed such a following that, that they've lost the, the true relationship and the true love of God that they should have. Come on, somebody. Don't let anyone call you rabbi for you. You have only one teacher, and all of you are all equal as a brother and sister. And don't address any one here on earth as father, for only God in heaven is your father. All right, this is why in the Catholic Church, I believe it's wrong to call a father there a father when they say father such and such, father, you know, th this and that. It says in the Bible, let's read the Bible, guys. We don't call people father. We don't need to be uh, respecting people by calling them father, okay? They don't reserve that office. God reserves that office in the synagogues. And don't let anyone call you teacher, yeah, but you only have one teacher, the Messiah, the greatest among you must be a servant. But those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Okay, God's looking for a humble mind and a humble heart, not prideful. What sorrow awaits you teachers of religious law and you Pharisees, hypocrites? For you shut the door of the kingdom of heaven in people's faces. You won't go in yourselves, and you don't let others enter either. What sorrow awaits you, teachers of religious law, and you Pharisees, hypocrites, for you cross land and seas to make one convert, and then you turn that person twice the child of hell you yourselves are. Blind guides, what sorrow awaits you, for you say it means nothing to swear by God's temple, but that it is bl blinding to swear by the gold in the temple. Blind fools, which is more important, the gold or the temple that makes the gold sacred? Are you say that to swear by the altar is not binding but to swear by the gifts on the altar is binding how blind for which is more important the gift on the altar or the altar that makes the gift sacred when you swear by the altar you are swearing by it and by everything on it and when you swear by the temple you are swearing by it and by god who lives in it and when you swear by heaven you are swearing by the throne of god and by god who sits on the throne all right, what sorrow awaits you, teachers of religious law, and you Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are careful to tithe even the tiniest income from your herb gardens, but you ignore the more important aspects of the law. Justice, mercy, and faith, you should tithe, yes, but do not neglect the more important things. All right, so tithing is good, but we can't get hooked up on, um, you know, tithing gets you into heaven. You know, there are other things involved. There is other aspects to the Christian walk and what God wants you to do. Yes, we should tithe, but just because we tithe doesn't make us holier than thou and exclude us from doing the work of God. Blind guides, you strain your water so you won't accidentally swallow a gnat, but you swallow a camel. Praise God, that's that's good stuff. Sometimes we're careful for the the, the littlest things that we, we hold um, big in God, you know, as far as legalism and stuff. But yet we say, okay, well, you're sinning in this area, but we have a multitude of sins in, in another area in our life that we just dismiss because it's it's not it's not what's taught. It's not popular. Our flesh doesn't like, um, you know, to be crucified. What sorrow awaits you, teachers of religious law, and you Pharisees, hypocrites? For you are so careful to clean the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside you are filthy full of greed and self-indulgence, okay? God's not interested in how you look on the outside. God's not interested in, in how much it costs for you for your dress and for your suit and what kind of cars you have and how, how good you look. God don't. It doesn't matter to God how good you look on the outside. If your cup is clean on the outside but you are filthier than filth on the inside, you, God wants to come and uh, clean you up, but we have to allow him to. But if we are caught in sin with our cup on the 
cup looking great on the outside and filthy on the inside when god comes back i'm sorry to say guys but you will not be welcomed into the kingdom of heaven that's just all there is to it we need to clean up the cup on the inside and then we will that god will deal with us on the outside praise god you blind pharisees first wash the inside of your cup and then and the dish and then the outside will become clean too i just said that praise god what sorrow awaits you teacher religious law and you pharisees hypocrites for you are like whitewashed tombs beautiful on the outside but filled on the inside with dead people people's bones and all sorts of impurities wow outwardly you look like righteous people but inwardly your hearts are filled with hypocrisy and lawlessness come on somebody we got a lot of people walking around claiming to be big shot christians even having a word, you know, sometimes God will allow people to speak. You know, God used some of the filthiest people to speak and do works uh, for him and stuff. But we have to be careful, very careful who we are letting lead and guide and teach us. Because even some of these people are clean on the outside. They look clean and pristine on the outside, but they're not clean on the inside, okay? Let's clean ourselves up on the inside. What sorrow awaits you teach the religious law and you Pharisee hypocrites for you build tombs for the prophets your ancestors killed and you desecrate you decorate the monuments of the godly people your ancestors destroyed then you say if we had lived in the days of our ancestors we would never have joined them in killing the prophets but in saying that you testify against yourselves that you are indeed the descendants of those who murdered the prophets go ahead and finish what your ancestors started snakes son of vipers how will you escape the judgment of hell Therefore, I am sending you prophets and wise men and teachers of religious law. But you will kill some by crucifixion, and you will flog others with whips in your synagogues, chasing them from city to city. As a result, you will be held responsible for the murder of all godly people of all time, from the murder of the righteous Abel to the murder of Zechariah, son of Berechiah, whom you killed in the temple between the sanctuary and the altar. I tell you the truth, this judgment will fall on this very generation. Jesus grieves Jerusalem. O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills prophets and stones God's messengers. How often I have wanted to gather your children together as hen, protect your chicks beneath her wings, but you wouldn't let me. And now look, your house is abandoned and desolate. For I tell you this, you will never see me again until you say blessings on the one who will come in the name of the Lord. Praise God. What a good and exciting chapter that was. Guys, let's get in the Word of God. Let's indulge in the Word of God. Let's grow some roots in the Word of God, okay? Um, we will never grow if we don't get into the Word of God, all right? All right, praise God. I hope you guys have a blessed week.